Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program episode 15 SS Car SSTO Cargo Plane in Action. Uh, this is a slightly modified version of our Bear uh, aircraft and our Cosmonaut version SSTO, I suppose. Um, completely different wing structure. We've redone all the, the fuel things down the side and reduced our air breathing engine count from 8 down to 6 uh, to save weight, really, and added a whole lot of intakes and that really cool tailplane configuration that we have going. Uh, this was kind of slapped dashed together and this was actually the initial test flight of this aircraft. And um, we got a little shakes and wobbles in here. I never bothered to set the trim settings or anything else really. I did not designate anything to use as air braking flaps. Uh, there are air brakes on it, but we won't really need those for quite some time. Let me just uh, double check some of our intakes here. And as we're getting higher and higher, uh, I've set some of these intake to be uh, toggled through action groups as uh, intakes create uh, a lot more drag when they're open versus when they are closed but as you get higher and higher in the atmosphere you want to open up your intakes and uh, I did them in series series of uh, six intakes so I, I started with six open I action group the next six open and then action group the next group open which I think was only four but I uh, I don't remember. It's been a little while since I actually built this aircraft and got all the action group thingies together. Uh, either way, Shep Sittlekerman is our pilot today. Um, he was pilot of the Bear SSTO, and I believe he was flying the Bear aircraft when we launched the X-15 off the back of it. So uh, he's got more than a few flight hours under his belt, and I think this is... Um, we're going for a better cargo deployment than what we did with the uh, the original Bear SSTO in that we're not just going to try to dump two tiny little satellites into low carbon orbit. Alright, now we're starting to get some mock effects here. Uh, we're getting pretty up there in altitude. So we're going to be coming up on our engine swap over here in a minute or two. Um, the engines I have also staged in groups. One action group will turn off four engines, and the sec next action group will turn off the remaining two. Uh, this is because when you, well, when you fire up the rocket motor and you shut down four engines, there's still enough air to run two engines. Uh, I mean, you'll still be getting some thrust. Yeah, there you see that action group going into effect. Our two wing engines still in operation. They're still giving us a, a little bit of thrust here, but uh, with all those intakes feeding just two engines, they'll stay operational for quite a while. Yeah, as you can see, they're not giving us a whole lot of oomph, but um, something is better than nothing. And since they're so much more efficient than that uh, liquid oxygen engine, every little bit helps. But all right, now we are on rocket propellant only. And we'll start making our burn towards orbit. <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, so we might need to... We, we do need a little more altitude, but I don't want to point just straight there at our prograde vector. Uh, that will probably take us a bit too low. Although technically we're in, we're in technical space now. Mm -hmm. And it uh, looks like we might have a bit of a fueling issue. Um, we'll just hope that that engine has access to enough to get us to orbit and we'll correct it when we get there. Still hoping that we'll start. Uh, well, we need to be going a bunch faster. Is 
basically what's going on here. And with uh, our angle so deflected from our prograde vector, we're not accelerating at nearly the rate that we could, but we, we need more altitude if we're going to break Atmo. And yeah, now we're starting to pick up the pace. So now we can start angling it down a little bit, use our RCS. And now is when we really start to push that Push that periapse way around. Like I said, it'd be still the R. Apoapse. Apogee. Apo curb. Alright. Spend some time coasting on the wind here. A little bit to go, but uh, yeah, looks like our orbit insertion burn is going to be pretty light. Mm -hmm. I should be time warping now, shouldn't I? Um, can't tell you why I'm not. I'm just not. So then there's that. And, yeah, unfortunately, it's at nighttime, so this is hard to see. And, uh, again, when I haphazardly slapped this thing together, I did not put external lights on it. Which is, um, kind of my mistake. Because, uh, all the ones from the original bear were mounted on the wings, or on those uh, external fuel pods that run down the side of the cargo bay. So they did not make it into the redesign. Unfortunately, my apologies, but you know, what can you do? Hmm. <laughs> So we should talk about how I should be time warping right now, but I'm not. This is my failure, and I apologize. I should have written down things to talk about, but I didn't. So what do you think about that net neutrality thing, huh? Yeah, we're all getting shafted. And that sucks, right? But, um, you know... I guess none of us have private citizenry have enough money to go out there and buy our own politician because, you know, money equals free speech and that's extraordinarily constitutional, let me tell you. I know, I just know the Founding Fathers envisioned money equals speech. And they also envisioned that uh, corporations are people because, um, you know, they wrote that into the original draft of the Constitution. No, no they did not. And... <laughs> until we start making some changes. All right, there's our cargo. Uh, it is a pair of mapping satellites, which uh, we are going to ship out to Minmus to try to map some surface features there. Um, I actually did do a landing at Minmus a um, long time ago, uh, but my DivX was not working properly at the time and all of that footage was lost and I didn't really feel like deleting the flag to keep continuity because that just seems like it makes my accomplishments trite. So I left it there. Uh, I do plan on returning to Midmus, but I felt it necessary to go map the biomes so I could try to plot a course of action a little better. Um, I've been to Midmus many times, but I've never actually plotted the biomes there which uh, makes it a whole lot easier to collect a whole lot of science in just one fell swoop. Because, you know, you know where to land and you know how to get from biome to biome. And if you can bring a science package for each biome, you can bring them all back in one trip. And it just takes uh, a little bit more fuel because you have to go hop from biome to biome. It's sad there's no biomes on Duna. Or Eve, really, because those are uh, Tylu. And lathe. Our plan is that it would be make a rover useful. I mean, rovers are nice on the moon, but you know, you get going a little too fast, or if you hit a turn or a bump or something or a change in terrain, you know, they flip over and explode violently. 
on tiny things like minimus it's almost impossible to drive anywhere the minute you start to put power to the wheels you're going to torque wheelie you're not really going to get anywhere uh rcs is probably the most effective way to move things around small distances on low gravity planets but um wheels no not so much it just sucks that all the places where it's good to have something with wheels other than Kerbin don't have multiple biomes so it really doesn't matter because you don't need wheels to get anywhere all right well we're fixing our fueling issue here by moving uh, fuel around from the outside pods to the inside pods which I thought I ran a fuel line for but apparently it just didn't count so We're going to take care of much of that as we can now. There's plenty of liquid fuel that they have access to, just none oxidizers. Alright, let's go ahead and separate our cargo here. And that's the decoupler, isn't it? There we go. Alright, now well, there's no RCS on this thing. How are we going to translate them out of the cargo bay? That's probably a really bad idea. Maybe we can just pivot it out. No. Alright. Here's an idea. <laughs> Let's not translate the cargo out of the bay. Let's translate the bay away from the cargo. Brilliant. Brilliant, I tell you. Alright. Make some adjustments here. Make sure we don't accidentally throw ourselves out of orbit. Good. Alright. Now let's uh, open up some of these solar panels. This is actually two satellites coupled together. Uh, we're going to use the driver at the back to get us there. Uh, since Minmus has such low, low gravity, um, it doesn't take a lot of delta V to make uh, translations there in orbit. You can... It's very easy. If you, we don't come in on a polar orbit, which I'm really hoping to do, we'll, we'll just go from over here because that's more along the lines of the keyhole we want. It, it, almost. It's not quite the encounter I was looking for, but uh, that'll do. So the relative speed should be different enough now. If I can just time warp away from here, we will drift away from the bear. Yeah, it's the other direction, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the other direction. That is one ugly space plane. I'm sorry I built such an ugly, ugly thing. In the next episode, we'll get there and we'll do what we're going to do.